Welcome back, everyone, to the Auburn Blitz. Go right to the Eric McKinley Mortgage Pro Hotline. Welcome in our good friend, Jason Caldwell from Auburn Undercover. Jason, good to hear from you here on this Friday, buddy. Yes, sir. How y'all doing? Man, we're good. Uh, let's dive straight in. Uh, we'll start with recruiting. Uh, I know a lot of uh, buzz around Deuce Knight, and he's the quarterback in this class that Auburn has uh, zeroed in on. Uh, was there last, Friday, last Saturday with his family. Uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, speculating on when he might switch his commitment from Notre Dame to Auburn. A lot of people feel like it may be tomorrow, but you just don't know, right? Yeah, just still waiting. Uh, you know, he actually stayed around Sunday. Um, I think they, they met with Freeze and did some things on Sunday, too. So it, it sure feels like it's pointing in the right direction. Um, you know, scheduled to be back tomorrow. My guess is if he shows up tomorrow, then that'll be all the sign that you need, um, you know, for Auburn's. You know, we'll see if it happens tomorrow. I think it could. Uh, but I think if, if, if Duke Knight's back on campus again tomorrow, then you got to feel pretty good about Auburn's chances, which we already do. Yeah, you know, I, I read some stuff about his relationship with Coach Freeman at Notre Dame and just how much he really likes him, and it's making this – very difficult that's why he hasn't pulled the trigger yet not that he doesn't like Auburn and really wants to be here but you know maybe the sign of you know and then you don't get that much with kids it didn't seem like anymore these days but he you can tell he genuinely cares about you know who he talks with and, and his relationships yeah no I think it's it, it is it's hard um you know it's you know it's hard to choose between schools it's hard to tell schools no sometimes and that's that's what you get to sooner or later, sooner or later it comes down to one. Uh, um, you got you have to make that final decision at some point, and so I think, uh, you know, I think, yeah, it's, it's a difficult choice because you hear great things from everybody. They treat you well. They tell you what you want to hear. That's the nature of recruiting, and uh, you know, it comes down to what do you want, what are you looking for, and you know, relationships are usually pretty good at most places. If they weren't, you wouldn't be interested in them to begin with. But, you know, at what point do you separate it? How do you separate it? And only those kids know what they're really looking for. Jason, uh, other other prospects like Naeem Alford and Melendez, the Miami commitment who decommitted, uh, some other guys out there that Auburn is, is definitely in on and, and anticipating maybe a, a flip from uh, just uh, any information regarding some of those guys? Yeah, I think Melendez, uh, you know, linebacker from Kissimmee, Florida, that was committed to Miami, I think – that one could be in the next week or two. You know, something may happen with him. Uh, you know, so that's got to watch. Name Alford feels like it's going to be more down the road a little bit. Now, who knows? I mean, he could heck, he could flip tonight, but I don't expect that. I think it'll be, you know, a little bit later down the road for him and to kind of see how things play out. But um, so those are the guys. And Andrew Babalow is a five-star offensive tackle. I think that's a guy to watch for uh, when you start talking about potential guys and, and how much of an impact a guy like Deuce could have on everybody else is a big deal because um, the quarterback guy could have an impact on other guys as you start to move forward in classes and get him off. I mean, uh, you get you get him on board and, uh, and you get Deuce on board and then all of a sudden you start to, to look a little different with some of the other guys potentially. Uh, Jason, let's move into last week real quick. I think Auburn did what they needed to do. Took care of business, dominant win. What did you take out of that game? Probably just taking care of business, probably more than anything. Um, they did exactly what they're supposed to do in a game like that. Um, you go out and handle it. I thought that maybe the biggest thing for me was watching how it happened. Over the first time in a long, long time, and maybe my, 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 maybe my lifetime, that Auburn, offensively especially, went out and said, okay, well, if you're going to give us this, here's what we're going to do. And they didn't back off that. They said, if you, if you put six guys in the box, we'll run it. But if you start putting seven or eight, we're going to throw it. And I thought there was a rhyme and a reason mm. for an offensive system for the first time in a long time. And so I thought that was good. Um, and then defensively, they, just, they played a bunch of guys and did those things. But, uh, you know, I think we'll see a, a much different much different offensive attack um, and defensive attack from Auburn as they, as they move forward under the coordinator. Jason, I kind of got the feel last week that uh, they really think highly of Malcolm down there for them to throw him the first ball of the game. He played slot. He played outside. He pretty much done it all, even on the punt team. Do you see that coming for him this week, too, against Cal? Yeah, you know, I, 
I don't know. I mean, I think it'll be similar. Um, my guess is they'll, you know, if you have some of those things, I still think they'll continue to spoon feed him and Perry Thompson and give them a little bit more each week. Um, I don't think we'll see them this turn loose and where they're making a lot of checks. I think I think they're in specific, for specific plays and doing things they do. Uh, but I think they'll continue to move forward because, I mean, there's no question they like him, his athleticism, uh, speed, all the things that he's done and work ethic. Um, yeah, he'll be a guy that I think will continue to grow into the offense the more work he gets in it. We'll carry this over, Kane, a couple more minutes over this segment because we want to ask uh, Jason a couple more things. Tomorrow, uh, Cal comes in. Uh, this was a sloppy game last year. Total different roster, though, this year for Auburn. I think you'll see the difference tomorrow. Yeah, and they got a bunch of guys, too. I think they got 52 new players, something like that. It's something crazy. Um, there's there's a wild stat in this game that I think is the is the thing to watch, and I wrote about it. I'm gonna put it up here in a little while. But Auburn's wide receiver group, obviously a lot of newcomers, uh, and uh, and and you know there's only two guys that were even on the roster last year. Only one of those, only one guy that's been on the roster more than 17 months uh, at wide receiver against the secondary group that has they have 10 players that have played in 253 college games 150 starts in the in the secondary for cal the really experienced secondary against a really inexperienced or relatively inexperienced uh, now there's some older guys that play some football here but this uh, uh, wide receiver group that's gonna they're gonna see some things they haven't seen before so how auburn adjusts reacts to that will be the story of the game for me uh to see if auburn can, can make some connections in the passing game yeah, do you see now stating that? Do you see some press man coverage in their future? I, I, I don't know that that's the way I would go if I was Cal. Okay. They, they, they may try to do I that. I hope they do. But uh, I, I, I think it's going to be mix-up coverages. Right. Try to give a bunch of different looks and make people think. Uh, <clears throat> I think if, if Auburn, if you gave Auburn their druthers and they said, what would you like to see? I think they'd say, hey, play us man. Absolutely. I think that's exactly what they would want to see. Absolutely. So, um, so I think it's going to be different. I think they'll see some zones, try to make them think and make them make mistakes mentally uh, and slow them down a little bit. That, that would be my guess. When it becomes press man, then it becomes athlete versus athlete. Then it and becomes that, one-on-one. That's it. We're going to run the RPO game and, and throw those one-on-one balls. That's exactly the nature of this offense. Absolutely. Well, Jason, uh, we appreciate you, as always, uh, being on with us on Fridays. Uh, uh, looking forward to tomorrow, a good game at 2.30 in Jordan-Hare Stadium, and we'll catch up with you again next week, okay? Good yeah, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. That's Jason Caldwell. With Auburn Undercover, does a great job of covering the Tigers. What a crazy stat, Jim. That's a lot of starts combined back there. So that will be a challenge for Auburn yeah. uh, in the passing game. We'll see how they match up. All right, we're going to take our final break on the show. Stay tuned. One final segment right after this.